This power supply was sent to me by a chap called Nick who said that it gave him an electric shock. And it's a Sweez, S-W-E-E-S, not Sweex. I wonder if it's a copy of the name, sort of clonish thing. S-W-E-E-S, 5 output, 10 amp power supply. And these things are sold on Amazon. And initially, when he said he got a shock off, I explained that, you know, you can get a tingle from capacitive, the cap capacitive coupling from these little capacitors, the class Y capacitors, and the capacitive coupling through the wings. He says, nope, it was like it caused muscle contraction. And also, when uh, the cable he had plugged in, micro USB cable, brushed against the radiator, there was a large, big shower of sparks. And just think, oh, yeah, got to see that. So um, let's uh, plug this dodgy adapter in and see if Nick's done the right thing by not using it anymore. So this is a set of test lamps, uh, and I've chosen test lamps because they pass quite a high current. So I'm going to put it into the neutral of the mains connection because I don't want to put it in the earth because if there's any major leakage, it will trip the RCD. And in this case, it would have tripped the RCD because the test lamps are showing full 230 volts. But let's see how much beef is behind that. So uh, what have we got, what have we got? There's the little test setup I made earlier on. Very crude, very simple, very dangerous, but probably not as dangerous as a power supply because this looks dangerous and that doesn't. If I stick this uh, in the USB port here and I stick this in neutral, the lamp lights. The lamp lights at a good current. It's half wave, the lamp's lighting brightly, so it's through a rectifier. So let's take a wee, let's analyse what might have gone on wrong here and then we'll open up and uh, reveal the horrors inside. So initially I can guess from the fact that it is DC that the mains is going in and it's probably going through some filtering if it's got any quality at all uh, and then it's going to a bridge rectifier AC, AC plus, minus and the usual situation it's going to the transformer winding coupled onto the output and then there's a sort of control circuit will uh, be switching that to the negative rail uh, and usually there's a little capacitor across here, class Y capacitor, because some current will be covered across the the, um, the windings, and it's just to provide a return path for that. And you can get wee tingles, but this is much more than that. Somehow, something has bridged this side of the circuitry, with the output of one side, the bridge rectifier, has been bridged across to the low-voltage USB side. So this is going to be very, very interesting. This is possibly... The first one I've had that is actually actively putting mains out on the USB connector. Now, the case looks, I don't think this is going to come apart easily. I may have to use unreasonable force. If it starts taking too long, I'll just pause while we, while the process of opening it unfolds. I do see it, it did kind of nudge up a wee bit there. Oh, that, that's good, that's good. I'm not going to be too precious about the case because this thing is obviously not going to get put back together again. So, what have we got? Uh, where's my flat blade driver? There it is to try and prize this out. Mm, it's not really want to come out. I can see already that there is sort of looks like uh, fairly good isolation. It looks like they've made an effort, so I wonder if it's in the transformers got a problem. This plastic uh, bit here, I'm just going to use force. That's it. Oh, it's even not coming out with the force. Where's that? A pair of pliers. Let's uh, just get rid of this bit altogether. See, Eve would be proud of me here. This is what we need, brute force to get into things, it's the best way. It's kind of stuck to the back, I can hear sticky tape, probably in the transformer. Ugh. Right, so let's see what we've got here. Let's get the meter in and stick it to continuity.
and see what we got here. Ooh, straight across. That is just an absolute dead short. So, uh, is it the capacitor? Or is it the transformer? The transformer, again, the transformer looks like it's got fairly decent thick insulation in the windings. I think we're going to have to get the soldier iron on and start popping components out. It's nice that the fault is staying for us, though. I'd better, I'd better just keep a nice look here, just in case uh, I'm missing something really obvious. I'm not really seeing anything majorly obvious here. Nothing connecting one side directly to the other. So that kind of suggests, uh, I would say there's three components that could be responsible for this now. The class Y capacitor, the opto-isolator, or the transformer. I'm thinking it could be the transformer, but it could also be a class Y capacitor, where, you know, they're supposed to fail in a safe manner. Um, okay. Let's uh, get the capacitor out of circuit. The solder iron is just in the process of heating up here, so I'll just flow a bit of solder on there. And there. This is where just heating the component up clears the fault or something like that. Not that I'd actually want to put it in. So let's uh, take the capacitor out. And check the capacitor for a start. Nope, not the capacitor. Is the fault still here? Yes, it is. I very much doubt it's the opto isolator, but having said that, I've said things like that before. But let's cut the opto isolator out. Is the fault still here? Yes, it is. That's looking like the transformer is at fault. So let's desolder the transformer now. This could just get a wee bit trickier. Um. Right, I may have to pause momentarily. I'll pause because this is going to take a wee bit of desoldering, I think. Okay, well that was quite a hard transformer to remove and rather annoyingly the fault is now cleared in the transformer. Certainly the, there's nothing left between here so we've lost continuity over to that side. So it's been the transformer. But testing between the windings, the fault has cleared and that suggests that it's not some sort of direct winding error it sounds more like an actual short circuit in the windings so let's uh, proceed further and open this up and see if we can find where that short is It did require quite significant force to actually open this, so that's probably why the fault. I was hoping to get it off subtly enough it would actually still be showing that fault. But no. So am I going to be able to separate the two halves with modest subtlety, or is it going to result in... This is going to have to be wound very unwound very carefully just to try and find that uh, problem. I want to be able to find the exact cause of the fault here. I may have to smash this core, I think. I think a sharp tap is called for. Oh, that's not even... Sorry! Oh, there we go. Righty ho. Let's start unwinding this very, very carefully. It's a very low profile winding. I reckon that you know the windings are just physically touched somewhere. This is where the old fashioned mains frequency transformers really won. Because uh they uh, 
had the separate bobbins. So this is possibly the feedback winding here on the outside and it comes very very close. It actually goes right across this output winding. All these windings under there are just, just rammed right onto that winding there, that output. Oh wait, no, that's uh, not the output, that's the primary. The primary does seem to have that thicker insulation on it, it would normally hint. But then it comes, you know, the, it, there's no major separation. I'm thinking... Uh, hold on. The very fact this uh, bent down a bit during the disassembly, it could be this one that was shorting. It'd be so annoying if I couldn't find the exact cause of the problem. Certainly the windings, the feedback winding has ducked right down here. And is lying against. Well, let's uh, gradually peel this off. And the significant thing about this is it's right next to where it's been stripped to actually tin onto that. So it's possible that because of that, It's just, uh, it's that gone on, it's basically violated that sort of double insulation aspect of that wire. So here's the first suspect bit. Is that bear there? Oop, let's make a huge mess with tape. So. That's going onto that pin. That was lying across. Is there any exposed copper here? Not. It would. It would only be tiny connection if it was. I'm not getting a connection though. that is a suspect area that will be worthy of further investigation. Right, okay, so I'm just going to keep that bit here and I'm going to mark that with a, a red sharpie. And then cut that off and put that aside. And now we're on to the primary winding, but one of one end of which will be connected directly to the I'll put those in there. One end of which will be connected directly to the rectifier. So let's find an end this tape. I want to do this as least destructive as possible because I do want to find out if what exactly what's caused this short circuit that has made the output of a USB power supply live. I wonder if it's a common problem. Intriguing. If you notice a slight flicker, it's because the I've got a shitty 100 watt LED in my workbench lights at the moment that is possibly Ooh, this is interesting. That's uh, one of the stripes, the LEDs is going out in my workbench lights, which is just, you know, par for the course. You know what, I think it may have been that primary making contact because I can see bare copper where these go up that really has been abraded in the surface just where it actually goes in there. I'm just going to double check that with the meter. 
I really must get rid of this bit of tape that's stuck firmly to the meter leads. Ah! So how far does this uh Yeah, see the the where the pri the feedback winding was, that's just bare copper going in there. I wonder how far that goes in. Is this going to reveal any more if I start unwinding it? Well, let's start unwinding it and find out, shall we? It's like a CSA autopsy. The first layer of the secondary isn't looking too close to that. The secondary is, as in so many of these things, it's split into two sections. Uh, one wound on one e either side of the the secondary, the primary is split into two sections, wound on either side the secondary for good coupling. So this one doesn't look like it's a a major suspect. At the moment the feedback winding is the biggest suspect. Okay, let's see what we get inside here. Now this is where the other side of the primary will have to cross the uh, secondary, so that is another point that it could have failed. I'm kind of slightly annoyed that the fault just cleared so annoyingly, but that it took a lot of effort to get this out, and uh, this is it. Worse still, I'm looking for the end of the tape here, and I'm not seeing the end of the tape. I want to take the tape off properly instead of digging into it. There it is. So yeah, sorry Nick, it looks like your USB, whatever you've had plugged into this, everything has been live at mains voltage. That's not a good thing. There's a little air. Uh, is that a foil in there? Yeah, there's a little air uh, conductive foil tacked onto one of the leads. I'm not going to cut this video short uh, or trim it down and say, oh yeah, I found the fault or anything like that, because I think yeah, you guys really want to see everything. Certainly I'd want to see everything. As I want to see this to the final conclusion as to if anything else is likely to have caused that. It's always strangely intriguing to find something that's malfunctioned in such a dramatic and life-threatening way. Oh, I'm not finding the end of this tape, that's annoying. If I don't find it shortly, I shall pause while I find it, while I hunt for it. I'll just clean my magnifying glass, I've just steamed it up with excitement. There we go. I'm just going to get different glasses. I'm going to get a, a bit closer to this. Activate zoom function for me. Oh, I tell you what, look at that. These windings, the insulation is off right back into them. It's seriously been damaged where they've actually been processing it. It's just bare copper. It's not insulated at all. I 
And the most prominent bit of that is where that feedback winding was passing. I'm Right now I'm suspecting that the feedback winding has been touching that. And the feedback winding um, will have been referenced directly to one rail of the power supply here. Now I have to take this secondary off. I will say right at the moment I want to take a I want to take a close up picture of that. I'm just going to pause momentarily. So taking a closer look at the secondary winding here, it's very clear that significant quantities of, of, of that thick insulation have actually been physically chaffed off in here, here and here. And something has just abraded that and certainly the primary, the feedback winding was definitely crossing that. And if you look at the uh, circuit I was testing and getting the short between the negative of the capacitor here and the output, and if you consider that the negative of the capacitor is connected to the feedback winding, which is quite a small winding, that could have been bridging across to then find its way through the sort of negative rail to the, the chassis of these. But uh, let's take this apart further. It's, I wonder what's actually caused that. So let's uh, continue the autopsy. So I'm going to uh, start unwinding that. Any sign of damage where it crosses the primary input. The primary input does at least have a little plastic, extra plastic sleeve here. So that's the first of those secondary windings. Right at the moment I'm pretty convinced that um, I've found the fault, but let's uh, go in further and see if I can uh, uncover any other exciting Horrors. You think they'd maybe do a high voltage test in these, but uh, though having said that, if looking at the feedback winding, it wasn't as if there's was, like masses of like insulation ripped off it. It looked as, more as though it had gone through as a pinhole. Possibly just right across that, but. Uh, Let's uh, keep going and see what we find in here. The secondary, because it's very high current, there's two paralleled um, windings and each of those is composed of three parallel wires. This is where these small transformers are not so great. It's with the thick, thick wires. It's the there's just so much risk of damage. Oop, that's come off completely now. All oh, that insulation looks fairly intact. And likewise, the insulation in the primary doesn't look damaged either. And that is just in, that's ultimately it. That's, uh, you know, all that's left is the intersection of the primary winding there. Yeah, my main suspicion then is that the feedback winding, so the feedback winding was, I say, connected to the negative. The <coughs> primary winding is actually connected to the positive and I wasn't getting it directly from there. So, um, yeah, that looks like it's been the feedback winding. And that's a, you know, it's a shame that's happened because um, they do look as though they've made an effort with this power supply. They've got the mains in. It goes through a, it's got a capacitor. Well, actually, there's a strange, it's got the fuse. Then it goes through almost like a little com mode choke here, but then it goes as a filter capacitor with a couple of resistors in series across it and then it goes to another uh, common mode type transformer with spark gaps across it 
uh, then the bridge rectifier, and then a big fat 68 microfarad capacitor. And you know, it just looks like it's just been designed pretty robustly inside. It's just that that's uh, all gone horribly wrong. I'm guessing I've completely destroyed that resistor there, or has that been damaged during? Yeah, I must have uh, damaged that when I was like taking it apart because uh, it's uh, broken off there. And the isolation, the, the track between it is significant enough. So, um, yep, that's uh, my conclusion is that it's this shredded insulation on the heavy secondary windings that's really been, it's really been gnashed through. It looks as though something has just abraded against it and it's done it to them all. So it's been while it's been wound that uh, something has happened and that's what's caused that problem. Morbidly fascinating when it uh, turns something that's pretty well, you know, with good intentions uh, into something that's just a wee bit dangerous. So look, the, the diodes have the usual scenario that they've tucked the capacitors right next to the heat sink. That's uh, not so jolly. But that's just from a sort of, that's going to affect life expectancy more now. So uh, not as much as the, the shorted winding from the main side to the low voltage would affect uh, life expectancy. In this case, it had a, a good go at... Uh, Next life expectancy, but uh, yes, that's that's very interesting. Um, you know, I've always said the transformers are like the weakest link in these things. That you can look at something and you can say, well, uh, you know, the isolation's good there, the isolation's good there, and you look at these thick insulation. Uh, you know, that's what I regard as double insulated windings, and you think, you know, that's good. And in this case, it just wasn't good enough. Um, it's all hidden out behind the tape as well. You you don't actually see that's what's inside. It's all down to these tiny wee transformers that are such a weak link in these power supplies. But yeah, that was fascinating. And uh, uh, as opposed to earlier, I said it's like a CSA investigation. It's actually, I meant to say, a CSI investigation, crime scene investigation. Because the CSA is actually the British Child Support Agency and that's a completely different type of investigation. Much, much more dramatic than this one. But uh, there we go. Interesting there. Uh, I wonder, I mean, these are still on sale. Um, Swee's uh, at Amazon. There must be others out there. that There must be a whole, probably whole batch that went out with these bad transformers. Because it was almost certain a common manufacturing fault in the machine. Um, so I wonder how many are out there with possibly that little primary winding, that with feedback winding, should I say, just gently just touching the, that bare copper. And the only thing between you and, well, potential death is that whisker-thin insulation against already roughed-up copper. So, um, yes, that's quite dramatic, but fun in a sort of dark, morbid sort of way. Always good to take stuff like this apart and find the the little dark secrets of what was wrong.